I'm a robot vacuum cleaner, so yeah, I got one gig. I suck up dirt, so pardon my inferiority complex about Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could they save their customers money on car insurance, but they got fast and friendly claim service, too. And an award-winning mobile app. Plus access to licensed agents 24-7. Who am I kidding? I can't even do corners. Uh Uh-oh. Choking hazard. (gasps) Popcorn girdles. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. This is the best of the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugatz podcast. UCF should be the national championship. Everyone in sports should be ashamed of themselves. They should be the national champion. But hold on. (laughs) Just slow down. We've got a problem around the show here. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us today in that I want to spend the entire show today celebrating the championship of the University of Central Florida. Unfortunately, no one wants to cooperate with me, including the University of Central Florida, who's not returning our messages. As I say, I want to turn this day into you won the national championship. You went undefeated. Nobody's better than perfect. You're the most perfect. You did it with a dude who's got one hand, but nobody's picking up the phone. Hmm. Like, we want to go have a, a parade at UCF. We want to go give them a trophy out of Mike's garage that is a fantasy trophy that's a little <laughs> bit broken and is three feet tall. But it's a trophy. And we want to do it, but nobody is cooperating with this. So I can't, if you're not familiar with the, what that music is, we did it after the Heat won championships. We swayed. We made jokes. We made fun of everybody. I can't do it if no one agrees with me on this and no one will support this cause. Let's be clear. We did it before the Heat won any championships. We did it when LeBron oh, simply announced true. he was coming that's down true. here. That's yes. true. That's <laughs> true. But can someone please help me with this? Because I've got things written down, but no one is supporting really? me. No one is, there's no <laughs> one around here down. because UCF just, be, UCF just beat the, the only team that beat the two teams that are playing for the championship. UCF is the only undefeated team in the country. And again, they are doing it with a dude who has one hand. Like, how can you not hand him the trophy? Put the trophy in that hand. You're going to give it to Nick Saban again? Honestly. It's it's infuriating. Yeah, I just don't care as much. Yeah, It's not, not doing anything for right. me. I watched it. I was rooting against him the entire time. Yep. <laughs> we all were. No one wants to deal with this. No, 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 hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Go to Orlando. Hold on. Everyone, show. slow down. I, I got to rent a car. I don't want to go to Orlando. All right. This That's a closer car. commute hold, for me, actually. Wait a minute. Were you guys actively rooting? Were you guys actively rooting against UCF yesterday just because you didn't want me to be right about saying that they were the best team in the country? Yeah. 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 Yes, we were. Yeah, Yeah. all of us, no doubt. Yeah, because there's more work involved, right? Because we'd have to fly. Miami's the only warm place in the United States. Why? See, there's your first mistake. Yeah, we'd have to go to Orlando. Yeah, the Magic Kingdom. Magic because Scott Frost used to work there. You got to be kidding me with this guy, Saban. Do it from 0 and 12 after losing to Furman (laughs) two years ago. 0-12 0-12 losing to Furman, linebacker with one hand. Yeah. Now, they're the only undefeated team in the country. They didn't even get to play in the playoff. Didn't even get to play. Like, that system is bogus. And ESPN is irresponsible for making it a legitimate championship. <laughs> for paying to make it a legitimate televised championship when one of the teams has been denied. Yeah. Still don't care, man. Still don't. Yeah. yeah. Four teams are pretty good. That made it. Oh, Can I persuade you guys by just screaming and stuff? But now I'm nervous. I don't want to. I, I don't want to do this because nobody supports it. Let's try it. We don't want you to do it either, man. All right, hold on. Let's try it. You would have an argument if you said that they deserve to be playing for the national. Well, but champion. they didn't get the chance, so we'll never know. Now, all I know is that they beat the team you guys were telling me was the SEC representative that could beat Alabama and Georgia because they did. And so now you got two teams playing for the championship. One of which that didn't even play in a championship game. And you got these guys left out, and the only reason they're left out is because they come out of nowhere. Like, you're you're allowed in sports to come out of nowhere and win. They were not allowed by the rules to come out of nowhere and win. They were not. That team could have been the most surprising national champion in the history of football. No doubt. Right. College basketball affords you. I mean, Jay Bill has tweeted about this yesterday. Affords you that opportunity where you can come out of nowhere and win a national championship. But here's the problem. This team was wronged, and evidently it doesn't care all that much it was wrong because I want to spend all three hours of ra- of the radio show today celebrating that that team wins and everyone else loses and nobody wants to do it with me. The fallacy is that the college football playoff was going to end all argument. Everything was going to be won on the field. There's always going to be an argument. The number five ranked team is always going to have an argument. There's always going to be a UCF. 
Mike, I don't have the proper confidence. I have the confidence of my conviction in doing a rant to celebrate UCF. I do not have confidence that I have the room backing me. Oh, you've lost the room. Yeah. Yeah. You've lost the room. I need the room backing me. I can't do it right. I can't yell and have the right energy. I need you guys laughing at the jokes. You guys just see more work coming down the pike because we all have to go to UCF to hand them a trophy that they don't want. So look at you and laugh nervously. Yeah. We're good at that. Be brave, man. I can Plus, muster, solo. Yeah, I can muster we something can, out for I you, man. Another before, you want to pretend right? you're great? We can do that. Yeah. I'll fake it. Made a career of doing it. <laughs> Weren't you saying all these things about USF? Until they lost. <laughs> I was. I was. I was saying it. And then they lost to Houston, and I had to change the UCF to the best team in the state. You just assume we forgot about the USF. Yeah. Thing, Are we going to get anyone from their team on our show? Not looking like it. No. Uh, They're not helping us. I mean, we can't go proclaim them the national championship champions on behalf of ESPN. Allison's just spoken to somebody. Here's what's happened, I think, with UCF is you were alone on this front before the game. Right. You were a pioneer. You right. were trailblazing. And you were seeing things that other people weren't seeing. And now that they beat Auburn, everyone is on the bandwagon right. saying right. UCF does right. So they don't need you anymore. They have Jay Billis. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I don't know where you guys got that they're ignoring or that they're all in. I just spoke to the SID. Okay. All right. If you want the 80, he's available. I don't I'll know take do. And I want to flood the marketplace with UCF thoughts today because this team is getting jobbed and ESPN is sitting here playing a national championship among teams that, that aren't, that don't have the resume this one does. That UCF beat more bowl teams than Alabama. Yep. Beat more bold teams than Alabama. UCF is the only team in the country that's undefeated. Like, this whole system is bogus. The whole system is a giant fraud when an undefeated perfect team it doesn't isn't allowed by rule to even compete for the championship. That doesn't make any sense. It's completely illogical. Um, it doesn't make any sense. It's wrong. It needs to be fixed. But the only way to fix it is to expand it. But that's it. it. No, it's the no, only, no, no, Dan, because that's why Scott Frost leaves UCF because he he doesn't think he has any opportunity of getting to the I, final I, four. I am saying that the Monday, <laughs> you guys are going to watch it. It's going to be a big national celebration, and that Monday championship doesn't matter. The best team has been decided by resume, and we're just playing another game that's a friendly. That we're going to turn into the one that matters when the team that has the best resume has been denied the championship by rule uh, because the whole measurement system is so bogus in that sport. Shaquem Griffin at 1130. Look, all these things are starting to flood in because of that rant that you really brought home with a Milton Berle I got more. Joke. I got more bad jokes here. More hmm. Milton Berle jokes? I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've worked hard this segment. <laughs> ESPN Radio. I, I have so many notes. Hopefully we won't get to that. <laughs> Don Lebatard. How much career does Greg Cody have left? Just over three hours. Very little, believe me. Stugatz. If my career were a round of golf, I would say I have teed off on the 18th hole. <laughs> I'm in the fa- I'm in the rough. <laughs> Man, am I in the rough? You've already teed off, though. You say I've teed off. You yeah. got about four or five shots yeah. left. Well, six or seven. Right, going okay. like <laughs> I teed off. He's you're about just, to take a drop. Oh yeah. No, I sliced it into Mrs. McGillicuddy's condo, and it bounced into the lake, and now I'm trying to find it. I got scuba gear. It's this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Our thanks to the new grandfather and congratulations to Christopher Cody and Roy Bellamy. Babies being made all over the place. So many people having sex. <laughs> and so Greg Cody is now a grandfather. Here I am. And congratulations to him. He sounds thrilled about the situation. We've got a legitimate <laughs> problem am. here mm-hmm. around the show today. Legitimate issue in that. The athletic director for Central Florida will be on with us in 40 minutes. Right. And I have now sabotaged everything that we're trying to do today with my quest, my crusade to bring shame upon college football and Kirby Holcutt and Condoleezza Rice. If she's still doing it, even though she's probably not, she gets some <laughs> residual shame from just everything that happened here, that they're playing a championship on Monday on this you know, sponsored by this network, paying God knows how much money for that game, and it's a bogus championship because it was won yesterday in the game before the one you noticed yesterday. It, it, the game before the one that all of you cared about and it was fun and went to overtime and we Georgia and Oklahoma, the one that you cared about, it was a great game. I can't dispute that. The one before that decided the national championship, and I'm confused why no one agrees with me. <laughs> Like, it's just because the construct is, hey, the championship is on Monday. But if I put all these resumes, if if I put all these resumes in front of you 
and I took off the uniforms, the teams, the coaches, and didn't give you anything other than the information, everyone would be voting UCF as the national champion of college football today. If they had to pick among the three teams that, if they had to pick among the two that are playing on Monday and UCF, and UCF, everyone, if you didn't have access to the reputations of the teams, everyone would be saying that UCF is your national championship champion. But the tension that we have around here is that Chuck Pagano has been fired. Uh, the, the Browns went 0 16. Rob Manfred, I'm not done with you. Like, I, I'm not <laughs> done with you. I know we left you last year, but I'm not done with baseball here. And I've sort of fired up the troops here to make sure that we make fun of baseball because last we left, we were getting in an argument with the commissioner of baseball and he was telling something, saying something that wasn't accurate. And so, I called him on it. He got angry. And then there were reports that he was calling executives. So we've got a lot to do, a lot to catch up on. And NFL playoffs are coming up this weekend. Uh, the greatest game in the history of college football played yesterday. Not That's right, game. it was. And this is all That's right, it was do. played yesterday, and you guys don't want to talk about it. Right. Well, the no, Peach we Bowl was the greatest game ever played. <laughs> the greatest and most unjust game ever played. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Was the Peach Bowl the greatest and most unjust game ever played? But we have a week's worth of content we need to get into, and you've just sabotaged this entire show already. All of it. Can't wait to talk to the athletic director, whose name I don't know. It, uh, it's Danny White. 11 Eastern. I do need I mean, to even set the, the name is boring. I do need to set the record straight on Condi Rice. She is no longer on the committee, so you can continue to blame her for seeing weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that weren't there, but you cannot blame her for jilting UCF. Yep. What the hell did you just do to the show? Well, setting the record straight. made a great point, and that's Thank a fine. Yeah. What's a fine? Well, you got a committee member wrong. Uh, she was a committee member. Don Lebatard. Will you sometimes call your childhood telephone number? We all do. We all do? Thank you. Yeah, I think Greg was saying he does Greg, it as well. feel free to speak into the microphone instead of that ther- thermos you're drinking out of. Right. Because you're on the radio. <laughs> we all do. Stugats. All right, I changed my mind. Do the rest of the show. Yeah. Into yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Into yeah. Your Better metal. it enhances do, you. Do, yeah, yeah, do your whole show mental, into the metal thermos. You never know. <laughs> this is the Don Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Before you die... Will there be an app that exercises for you? Before you die, will there be an app that exercises for you? I want to ask you guys something off of one of the games last night, and we will be talking to the real national champions throughout the show today. Uh, congratulate the athletic director at UCF for his national championship. Bring on Shaquem Griffin, uh, the one, the bad mofo, one-handed I I can't believe what that kid does. I really can't. I am in awe, and I, I'm legitimately ashamed that I didn't vote him for the Heisman Trophy. He should have won the Heisman Trophy this year with all these silly arbitrary measurements. A guy out there with one hand playing at the level he was playing for as the defensive stalwart on on a on an undefeated championship team. But what I wanted to ask you guys, did you guys watch the Alabama-Clemson game? Yeah. I got mad at Dabo again. And I get mad at Dabo quite a bit because you do a lot of the Bible thumping and I'm here to teach the kids. And what I saw yesterday happening in Alabama Clemson very early on is like, oh, Alabama knows all the plays. You got nothing. You got nothing. Dabo, you have nothing. And so what does he do? Yell at his quarterback. And I'm like, oh, that's weak. Look, you're getting exposed, and we're all watching this, Dabo. Nick had a month to prepare for this, and you have nothing on offense. There is nothing you can do. So what does he do? He gets frustrated and screams at his quarterback. The quarterback who got him to where he is this season. Right. After the other – the only way – Nick Saban's always got the best players. The only way to come close to beating him is to have the guy who was about to take over the NFL at quarterback. Mm -hmm. So he gets carried by his quarterbacks to where he is. Dabo is a lifetime interim guy who now is all of a sudden champion famous. And thinks he's responsible for it, or God is responsible for him. What I'm telling you is what I saw with his behavior from the quarterback, with the quarterback yesterday. I didn't see God in it. Like, I mean, what do you want him to do in that spot? I'm not, I, I'm not I want him to eat the loss, not blame the kid. I want him to eat the loss. He had nothing for Nick Saban yesterday. It was obvious. Alabama was, Alabama was running around calling out the plays. They had no answers. And so the quarterback's already losing and frustrated right. and actually getting hit. And Dabo's on the sideline getting embarrassed. In a way that's obvious to all of us, you have nothing. If you don't have that quarterback, you, Dabo, have got nothing for Nick Saban. So what do you do? You turn and yell at the college kid. Right, he yells at Kelly Bryant. But if he makes a couple of boneheaded decisions and bad passes, bad plays, I'm just asking, because what you're a, what's a bit unfair about this is you don't know if Dabo's thinking to himself on the sideline, and maybe he said it after the game, I have no idea. 
hey, I'm out. Co- I'm being out coached here. Like Nick Saban's no, just I, better at this than I am. He might be thinking no, that to what, himself. What then. I am telling you is that that dude got embarrassed last night in front of everybody because Alabama knew everything Clemson was going to do, and because he couldn't stop it, he gets mad at his quarterback over it. And the only game they lost this year is because Dabo didn't have his healthy quarterback. That quarterback did everything for him this year. And so it made me really mad to have the Bible thumper behaving that way. Yeah, and essentially he's yelling at his quarterback for not being Deshaun Watson. You know, as if, I mean, nobody's Deshaun Watson. No, but that's the thing. The way you beat Nick Saban's teams is with mobile quarterbacks who are Deshaun Watson. That's the only, that's Manziel. The only losses that Saban has in his career against mobile quarterbacks. And in that game, that's the one weakness Saban has, and Dabo could do nothing with it. Nothing. And that's on him, and he knows it. And so what does he do? He kicks the dog when he gets home from work. It's like, dude, that's not cool. That's not cool. That's not, that's not the stuff they teach you in church. Yeah, but it's the stuff that coaches do. Dan. Oh, but I mean, but what I'm but my point you're is you're asking him to be a different coach than any other coach no, because no, he goes no, to no, church no, so much. No, Stugatz, <laughs> this is actually what I'm asking you. If you're a holy man of of spiritual being, this is what I'm actually asking you: coach the kid, help him in that situation. Yelling at him is not coaching; it's just releasing your frustrations. Like you could tell him that he got something wrong. All the yelling conveying of that. Right. Is simply, that is not coaching. It's not leadership. It's just a guy getting steam off his chest on a powerless kid because he can. And, and the frustration is not understandable. You just won a national No, but it is understandable because you were personally getting humiliated by a better coach last night who dragged you because you didn't have Deshaun. Dragged you. And everyone saw it in a way that was really obvious. And I just, I ended up getting bothered by that. You think it's unfair? You think I'm unfair because I am really. I, am I think ra- you're holding him to a higher standard. For- I, he holds himself to a higher standard, man. He keeps that. telling us that he's a man of God and he's there to lead kids. That's not leadership. Well, uh, it's he, not leadership. He does keep telling us that, but we've seen his antics on the sidelines for years now. I mean, it's. I, I'm just trying to separate Ro- how he is Ro- as a football Ro- coach and how he is everywhere else in the world. Grow up, coach. Grow up. I don't think it's fair to invoke the the religion. What you're saying is a human thing. You could say that about any coach. There are plenty of religious coaches that aren't as publicly religious as Dabo that yell at their players, and you don't get no. But it bothers me more when you're when you're wandering around, not necessarily holier than thou, but that you've got answers that others don't, and you have a spiritual being that others don't, and you're always telling all of us that that is the way to be. And I'm watching your behavior when that happens last night, and I'm like, that ain't the way to be. Like, I don't think anybody thinks that's the way to be just because football says it's okay to be that way. Because I'd be fine with it if it was actually coaching. He wasn't helping. How are you helping that kid by screaming at him, embarrassing him, and showing everybody on national television, hey, I'm not to blame here. He's to blame. When I saw it, Dabo, you were to blame for that. You had nothing for a team that had better players than you. Nothing. You had a month to prepare, and if you don't have the best quarterback in rookie quarterback in the NFL, yet you had you couldn't get a slant off. Like they knew everything you were doing. Yeah, I think you're in the minority, though. I think most people see that and are made uncomfortable by it because that's just what coaching is. That's that's actually some of the one of the few times you could actually visibly see what that's not coaching, what coaching is. is. That's not teaching. That's just for, that's just a, a, an immature yeah, you, man being frustrated. You're isolating one moment there that we all saw. We have no idea how Dabo acts around that kid and all the other times. I'm not talking. I'm. Not, I don't want to define him by his worst public moment. I. I'm guessing that Dabo is very kind man to kids. What I'm saying is what he's showing me when the pressure mounts and someone's to blame that he doesn't want the blame, and that's not leadership. I don't think this quarterback's a fragile kid. I think he's a starting quarterback for a major college program and probably has a little bit of Teflon on him in terms of what his coach is just venting well, about. Well, can you guys answer me this? Because help me with this, right? Because one of the things that this presses on for me is I hate when the powerless are abused or when they're bullied. Can you explain to me why it's not any kind of national controversy that Mark Rick, the University of Miami coach, grabbed a referee in a rage? Can someone explain to me why that isn't a huge scandal throughout sports? Because if a player did it, you know good and well we would have been talking about it all week. Explain to Mark Rick. And is it because he's a holy man? Like, what are we doing there? 
Because Mark Rick is a calm person, and I love Mark Rick, but he lost control of his emotions and he embarrassed himself by grabbing the referee, even though he was right, by the way. He was totally right to be angry because he that game got blown on him because a, 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 a holding call was not called that was obvious and should have been called. But when you react that way, why is that not a controversy? It should have been. It should have been. What Rick did was pretty insane. If it happened in the Rose Bowl with everybody's eyes on it, it'd be a talking point today. And I think probably what's happened there is it happened on a Saturday and not a lot of people were paying attention to it. And it got out of the news cycle before it even got in. Well, he, he was penalized for what he did. He was very contrite afterward, and he has a clean enough reputation where there was no baggage well, that leading helps. to that. I, that's I, the I, point. I, that reputation okay, helps him. But there. what I'm asking you is if you're going to be the holy man and you're going to get the reputation that you are, you get from being the holy man, which is in that situation, oh, that's out of character, then please spend more time when we're watching you in public at times of frustration, when it's time to be a leader and be accountable, blaming someone that is in the mirror instead of the helpless kid who got you to where you are today after the other helpless unpaid kid won you the championship. The only way to beat Saban is with a quarterback who can run. Like, be grateful to that quarterback that he got you that far, Dabo, because you don't deserve to be there based on what I saw from your coaching last night. Don't forget, you can hear more of my son's Dan and his two weekdays starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPNU. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Lebitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stu that's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number, 3030. Don Lebatard. Our players are held to a higher standard, and we can summarize it all in three words. Make that four words. <laughs> we are the Lobos. We are the Lobos. Thank you. Lobos. Stugatz. We are the Lobos. We are the Lobos. I don't know. We are the Lobos. We are the Lobos. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance with insurance for cars, home, boat, motorcycles, RVs, and commercial vehicles at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and Progressive.com. Danny White, the athletic director at the University of Central Florida, is going to join us in just a minute here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. James Harden will miss the next two weeks with a hamstring injury. The Green Bay Packers have stripped Ted Thompson of his GM duties, but is expected to keep him on as an advisor. And finally, a cured human toe used as garnish in drinks was stolen from a Canadian bar in June. However, since it was in Canada and people are nice there, the toe was quickly returned to the bar with an apology from the culprit. <laughs> what kind of toe? A cured human toe used as garnish in drinks. Why would you use a cured human toe as a garnish in drinks? We'll ask Danny White, the athletic director <laughs> of the University of Central Florida, next. The four-for-four four deal at Wendy's gives you a sandwich plus four nuggets, a small fry and drink, all for just $4. And now the four-for-four four has more variety than ever with eight sandwich choices. So try them all and pick your favorite at participating locations for a limited time. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. The University of Central Florida are the national champions of college football in my personal record book. And Danny White, the athletic director, champion, joins us now on a big day for him. Congratulations on your championship, Danny. I uh, I salute you. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, and thank you for joining us, if you're... I wonder how it feels. Yeah, well, I guess I should start there. How does it feel to be the national champion? Oh, I, I think our, our kids are the national champions. We're really excited uh, about this season and, and just all, all that uh, our student-athletes went through, uh, a lot of adversity. Uh, but to go through a season 13-0 and with a hurricane rescheduling games, they didn't have a bye week, all the, the, uh, the, the rumors about our, our, our coach and the coaching carousel and 
we just got a mature group of, of uh, really talented uh, young men that uh, played 13 games and won them all. And uh, I think they deserve to be uh, considered national champions. We're, we're really proud of them. What do you get for this national championship that you and I are the only people in the world who believe you deserve it? Oh, I think uh, hopefully in the coming days a lot more people will, will, will become believers as well. We're going to uh, continue to uh, – uh, promote the fact that we feel like we're deserving of a national uh, a championship. Uh, there, there's been, I uh, think a bit by our research, just quick research this morning, there's been 36 different years where there's multiple champions crowned in college football. There's been years where there's three or four national champions crowned. So I respect the CFP committee. Uh, no, you shouldn't, though. They... No, see, here's the thing, though, Danny, you shouldn't. You should not. And you shouldn't they, say that either. They d- don't stop saying that. Can you stop saying that, please? Like, don't <laughs> respect the committee. The committee disrespected you. The committee made by rule. The committee made by rule it unfair that your team couldn't win the championship. You did everything perfectly, and it was not enough for the committee. So I would like you to put down your respect publicly for the committee right now. <laughs> I won't put down my respect. I will say that uh, that I don't agree with them, and I've been very vocal about that all fall. I think that, but I think you they, need to be more vocal about it. I think the way we need team. to get it. I think we need to get this really ramped up. You need to be more vocal about it. I'll right. help you, yeah. but you need to like, right. like let's set fire to the place because you guys deserve <laughs> the national championship, not some co championship. You guys like you make the argument because you beat the teams that are playing for the championship, and you haven't lost. That's a riddle. That's champion. Yeah. For the for the yep. entire and, time we've been watching college football, that's a champion. And what makes college football special uh, historically is that every single weekend matters. You can't lose a game. Every single weekend matters. It's it's incredibly hard to go undefeated, and that's what our kids do. But yours didn't matter, and that's why that's you right. should be out. You should and be laughing not, at you're, the committee. Danny, you are yeah. not fired up enough about right. this, Danny. I need your help. <laughs> you you are not. You put down the athletic director, corporate veneer, and get angry. Because you have a right to be angry. I, I don't need to be angry. I'm proud and excited of the fact that we just won the national No, you need to be angry. That, that, no, no. That, that's need enough to be for us. You need, Danny, you need to be angry. Yeah, I mean, it helps. It helps. I might actually be able to get you this trophy somehow. If your anger, if we, brought, if we together... <laughs> the real trophy, you're saying? <laughs> the actual real trophy. The cat, change the entire construct of college football. Right. All you got to do is say, it's an outrage. And act like you mean it. Are, is it an outrage? Are you <laughs> outraged? I, 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 I am excited about our team. <laughs> I, I, it, it, the, I'm not trying to change the, the CFP process. You should. There's going to be a CFP champion, but that doesn't mean that, that we're not a national but champion. why aren't and you that, trying that's... to change the process? I, 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 and I'm sorry to badger you. I'm, I'm kind of being rude. No, but... no I, I am trying to change the process for 2018 and beyond. I think that the the, ter- the uh the playoffs should expand. We need at least eight teams. I think we need to go back to the rankings that we had in the BCS era. In years in the BCS era where schools like us uh, had zero or one losses, they were ranked like in the top five. And all of a sudden the rankings have changed. And I, I think that there's a, a bias against schools outside of what we currently call the Power Five. But we feel strongly we're in a Power Six conference. Our league is not respected enough. There's some really tough football in our league. You know, we played teams – as good or better than Auburn in our own conference. No, I agree really with you. South game. Florida is just as good as Auburn. Just as good. We had a, a great competition at Navy. They had won 17 straight home games as the longest winning winning streak at home in college football. That was a hard game. Winning at SMU was hard. Their defensive line was formidable. And then two top 25 wins against Memphis. It's hard to beat a top 25 team twice, and they're a really good team. Uh, so I, I don't think our conference is respected enough nationally, and I think the committee – needs to pay more attention to the level of football in our conference. So in the BCS era, when I mentioned those those teams like a Boise State, like a a TCU, like a Utah, and they finished the season ranked so high, uh, they were outside of what at that point was the six power conferences in the BCS era with the Big East. And they still got more respect. We're on is, the outside it's, it's, looking. I don't understand how you're not furious. I, you're, you make well, such no, a good here, argument. He, here's here's where maybe you'll get furious, Danny. Like let's say it was eight teams, and each of the Power Five winners got. They might have left you out anyway. And then you had three at large, okay? Because the way they ranked you headed into the postseason here, I don't think you get in. I don't think if, you ever get the game, even with an at large bid. I don't think you get in. Yep, and that's what that's what needs to change. I think it's it's an expansion of the the playoff is is the, is the, one of the steps, and also changing how we how we uh, rank. You I know, mean, we we've kind of fallen off kilter, I think, uh, with the CFP rankings, and, and I think we had it right in the BCS era 
uh, in the in the rankings part, having only two teams compete for the championship wasn't wasn't the right wasn't the right thing to do. But I think we're ranking things a lot more uh, accurately than than we are now, and that's been the case all season. For us to come out, I think we're 18th in the first ranking uh, as one of the only undefeated left. But to continually have two and three lost teams ranked ahead of us, I thought was just a, a lack of uh, respect for the, the the having a perfect. That's why you've season, got to lower your respect for the that, committee. That's why. That's why you got to lower your respect for the committee because it was a lack of respect toward you. So you go ahead and do the same oh. thing to them. Can you? Can I say oh, that not. your respect for the committee has been diluted one fraction of one percent? <laughs> it's all right. One, one, it's okay. I, I disagree with the uh, committee, and I have all fall. I strongly disagree. Okay, with Okay, but them. have you lost respect for the committee? Just one degree of one fraction because of all the reasons that you said. No, oh, that's that's a group of people that that <laughs> volunteer their time for the good of college football. Like, oh, oh God. all right, Danny. I've got, I'm sorry. I got to kick you off the show right now because you are not <laughs> quite as courageous as your team. Because uh, I want you to go out there and bash, and you will not do it for for us. But just how many points would you have beaten Alabama by? Oh, I don't know. And th- th- that's the other thing that I found you know. frustrating is when people ask questions like that. So nobody asks uh, uh, Clemson uh, or, or Georgia or Alabama or Auburn, well, how many points would you beat USC by? But we get asked that question all the time. So we have to stick our neck out there because we're in a conference that people don't respect enough. That, that's not fair to our kids. Our kids played 13 games. They won 13 games. Every college football game is hard to win, uh, and, and I don't think that's a fair thing for us to – to, to stick uh, our neck out like that uh, on, on behalf of our, our, our student-athletes. They're the ones out there having to fight for a victory. and it, It's hard to win games. Danny, you alluded to this. Obviously, the college football playoff committee is prejudiced but, uh, against anyone outside the Power Five conferences. So the question is this. How does your conference get to be in the Power Six? What's the process of systematically going about getting the American conference rated so to speak. It's a very serious sports question. Yep, I think it's similar to our national championship. We are national champions, and our conference is a Power Six conference. We need to continue to promote that fact until the rest of the country starts to believe it and understand it. I think we're already competing at that level. This is, I think, the fifth season of our conference in, in football, and we've every year we've had uh, top 25 teams, three or four teams typically in the top 25 We've played in uh, three New Year's Day bowl games now since our conference started. We won them all. Uh, I think it's three out of the last four years. Uh, so th- this conference is playing at a really high level, and I think it's just new, and people nationally maybe haven't understood it yet, uh, but I think that's starting. Certainly last night we made a, a big statement polite. to that effect. Danny, all right, polite. Danny, listen to it. I'm going to try this polite. again, okay? I'm going to try this again. One time, one last time. Steve Weiberg is a former college football reporter for the USA Today, okay? He's on this committee. Okay, no one cares about Weiberg. Take him out. Take him out. Take him out. Take Weiberg's him out. a clown. He, I mean, Weiberg's a clown. Yeah, he take him ruined out. the national championship. Take him out, White. Take him out, <laughs> White. And I'm hearing I'll reports that you guys do. Uh, uh, no, I'm hearing reports <laughs> if he had an at-large vote, a bid, like he and he would not have voted for your team. So now take him out. What do you mean you're hearing reports? You totally made that up. I did. Weiberg, Why? take him out. Weiberg. Guys, I'm proud of our football team. I think we we had an unbelievable no, year. No, Danny, I got you. We got you. We got you. Congratulations. We have a trophy. Will you accept? It's kind of broken. It was in the garage of Mike, our producer. It's dusty, but it's three feet tall. It's our fantasy trophy. Will you accept it on behalf of the show and ESPN, the national champions of college football, Danny White's UCF Golden Knights? Do you accept? I'd be I'd be proud to accept a legitimate trophy, not a not a. We a don't fantasy have one, one of those. All right. Well, I think you guys should make one. I okay. think we're, we're going to have a, a, a parade to celebrate the success of our team, and we'd love for you guys to make a legitimate When's trophy. When's a parade? When's a parade? Because uh, this, this kid deserves it. When's we're a parade? working on that right now. We're, 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 we'll be announcing that later today. Oh, can we work with it? You're not giving us any news. I want to work with you on that parade. I want to be a part. Can I Break be a news? Like I want to. I want to award you this trophy that we make for you at that parade. When's that parade? Let's do it. Let's All right. do it. All right. Nice. That sounds like a plan. I, I tell you, I, it hasn't been fully uh, ironed out exactly the, the details on it, but it will be in the next few hours. So I'd love love for you to be there. Okay. And we'll bring the trophy that you don't want. Thank you, Danny. Thank awesome. you. We appreciate it. No, we want a legitimate national championship I know, well, I, okay, trophy. Okay, but we'll we also want. bring the one that you don't want. We'll right, give you two right. trophies. I feel I think your team is that good this year. We'll give you two trophies. The trophy from the garage and a legitimate trophy. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks for having me on, Dan. Thank you. You're home for the 2017 regular season national championship, UCF Knights. 
Don Lebatard. My hair is unfashionably age inappropriate long, perhaps the longest it has been since college, and may continue as such. I'm not sure why. Last vestiges of the <laughs> of the extreme outer limits of midlife crisis. Stugats. The feudal shield <laughs> held wobbly against the encroachment of mortality. <laughs> Maybe the last stage before the onset of Mr. Rogers style sweaters <laughs> and the silent surrendering acknowledgement of official old age. <laughs> All truth. If this is how you always wrote, you would be like one of America's greatest authors. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I want to get to a story that Gary Payton told about Michael Jordan. Remind me to do that at some point because you guys love your Michael Jordan stories, and Gary Payton tells a great one. But before we do that, we've got a useless sound uh, sound montage, the final one of the NFL season. Guillermo does this all year. He's got week 16 and 17 because we've been off. Uh, Guillermo, are you happy or sad that Chuck Pagano has been fired and you can no longer have Pagano sound in the useless sound montage after NFL Sundays? It was really sad listening to it. Like I, I was listening to his final press conference and I, I felt like I was losing a friend. <laughs> okay. How about John Fox? Was John Fox the same feeling? Less. But, yeah, I'm still sad that I'm going to lose him. Okay. Um, and New what, people will appear, Dan. That's how this works. A circle yeah, of life. It is. It is the circle of life. New Mike Malarkey's will appear. Yeah, and Gruden is a gold mine. Um, but they're not new. They're recycled. That's right. Yes. Well, well, Stugatz has been laughing all morning about the idea that Jim Schwartz is in play for jobs. <laughs> Jim Schwartz's career record is like 15 or 20 games under 500 in a very limited career. It's worse than that. I believe it's worse than that. How bad is it? (laughs) What do you imagine, Cody, is Jim Schwartz's career record as a head coach? 21 and 40. That's a good guess. It is a good guess. He's 29 and 51, and he's a candidate for every available job right now. I mean, think about that for a second. The only thing I remember about Jim Schwartz's entire career as an NFL coach, it's two things. He almost fought Harbaugh, and he's got a tattoo. And most coaches don't have a tattoo, and I believe it's a heavy metal tattoo. Can you give me some information, please, uh, on Jim Schwartz's tattoo? But anyways, here is Guillermo's useless sound montage, the final one of the NFL season. Enjoy. (laughs) Apologize first for being late, but it takes a long time to hug you know, 80-some-odd people, coaches and players, but it really felt good. Great to, to you know, go undefeated in the North. Uh, it was significant for us. Uh, we realized if we want to do some of the things that we have to do, man, it starts with in a AFC North football, and now we'll transition and get ready for the single elimination tournament and our participation in it. Uh, they got Hearts Alliance. <laughs> I was thinking about AB not being out there and trying to fill those shoes, but you can't fill those shoes. So I, I just try to tell them, don't try and fill them. Just be the best you can be. When AB's not here... Um, we, we, we all take his play and you eat off of it. Bill, you guys have lost five straight, uh, 9-11. and 11. No kidding. Congratulations <laughs> for another milestone. I don't know if there's any milestones left. I'm looking for intelligence. I'm looking for vision. I'm looking for leadership. You know, faith is believing what you can't see, and the reward for believing is that you get to see it. So I'll continue uh, uh, to have faith. We're hungry. We're angry a little bit, um, which is good in this instance. It's a momentum type of game. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to get the momentum. You want to maximize it, you know, when you get the momentum. And So those momentum, and then, then when you lose the momentum, man, you better stay in it get that momentum back. He's a pleasant guy. He's he's a put-his-hand-in-the-pile type of a guy. I think I look back, I don't think that we were <laughs> anywhere in the midst of being picked to win the Super Bowl or anything of, those, of that nature. We're playing a big game. They're all big this time of year, and as you keep moving on, they get bigger. And uh, <laughs> you know, we're going to have to keep... You know, winning games, that's that's what we're out there for. Bruce Cunningham just said it's not a beauty contest. So, And you know what? We haven't won many beauty contests around here over the years, Bruce. I think we all know that, right? His quickness, um, his tenacity, <laughs> his coachability, uh, reliability, availability, durability. Yeah, I think, uh, like, I said, uh, I think I said the other day, I think we're kind of at ground zero, level field, however you want to do it, right at waterline. Um <laughs> They're all emotional. They're all emotional. I'm an emotional guy, you know, <laughs> cry at movies, you know, so it doesn't matter what it is. Old Yeller, I've seen it 15 times. I'll, if I'd watch it tonight, I'd cry again. There's no cookie cutter in terms of decision making. Um, there, There isn't. 
Um, but you better weigh all variables, some of which are intangibles, and we do. They've been a really good football <laughs> team all year. Uh, the, the win number doesn't show it, but the tape shows it. There are people available on the street that the bad habit that people have is, well, what's wrong with them? Wait a minute. Don't look at the negative. You know, what's right with them? The sky's the limit. They can do anything they want to do. As long as you fight and you don't ever quit and you don't ever throw in the towel, which you never did, and you keep picking yourself up day after day after day, and you do the right thing and you work and you prepare and you compete, you can do anything you want to do in this life. and You don't make excuses. We're going to work our fannies off and we're going to get it fixed. So I was on the sideline and Ben was like, you don't know what code is. Code is like January, 8.30 p.m., below freezing. I'm like, wow. That's definitely a day I'll be wearing a jacket. Um, we'll always be. We'll always be Hoosers no matter no matter what happens. I don't think there's any curse. I've got a I've got a uh, crystal ball and I've got a what is that? A wood spirit hanging in my office, so there's no damn curse. Can I do this? Can I be uh, I, Maria doesn't watch these things or anything, but I want to thank her personally for her her support. How how long do you want to continue coaching? You know, I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> and uh, the price of love is sometimes is that, you know, you have to uh, you have to say goodbye. You call this the last rodeo coming into this game. Six years in, how is it? What a rodeo it was, man. Did you see them ride? They put their spurs on and they kicked that horse and they kicked it. And, and what a way to finish. What a way to go out. Oh, oh nice. Pagano. Oh, Chuck. Nice. nice work by Pagano. Oh. We are going to miss you. I actually heard it wrong. He said we're all Hoosiers here, and I actually heard <laughs> we're all losers here. <laughs> Don Lebatard. You know, that utopian scenario is waiting a long time for a continuation. Here. Right. Let's Thank get you. to utopia already. Let's really? go. Let's go. Is all it's cracked up to be utopia? Yep. Or is it overrated? That's what we need to find out mm-hmm. first. Stugatz. Kind of overselling it, right? Yeah, there yeah. is no utopia. Get there and be very disappointed. Right. Sort of unrealistic to expect a utopia, quite frankly. Just deal with the real world first. Exactly, right. Worry about utopia in heaven later. You are dead on today, my friend. Continue with your program. No, thanks! This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Shaquem Griffin going to join us here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Dan, is he their best player? I mean, he I, he should have won the Heisman Trophy, and I'm not even kidding about that. Like, he should have won the Heisman Trophy. What this kid does for that team is amazing, and he doesn't get nearly enough credit for it. All right, he'll join us in, uh, in just a minute. We'll give him some credit. James Harden will miss the next two weeks with a hamstring strain. The Green Bay Packers have stripped Ted Thompson of his GM duties, but he is expected to keep uh, an advisor role with the organization. Finally, Turkish archaeologists believe they have dug up the original Santa Claus. <laughs> For all the latest headlines and information, due to the Sports Center on ESPN Radio okay. all throughout the day. All right. Those Turkish uh, archaeologists might as well have been running this college football committee <laughs> that, that has kept my man, that uh, Shaquem Griffin, out of the championship. I'd like to get one of them on the show with us. Yeah. I mean, imagine you dig up the original Santa Claus. I, I no, Put us there, great. please. Yes. yes. I, I, w- I was going to mention that Shaquem uh, Griffin did not finish in the top ten in voting, but that the UCF quarterback, Mackenzie Milton, did. He was number eight. Thank you. Um, so, Shaquem, thank you for joining us, and congratulations on the real national champion. Do you feel like a national champion today? I mean, I definitely do. I mean, we, we did everything we were supposed to do. I remember uh, Coach Foster telling us, only thing you can do in the season is, is, is win a game. And uh, I don't think we got too many games left for us to win. I think, I think we won them all. So, <laughs> yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely feel, I definitely feel like we did the right thing by just winning every single game in the season. But I, I really do believe, Shaquem, I guess you're supposed to say this, but I really do believe that your team is good enough to beat any team in the country. And I'm wondering, are you guys angry about the fact that they're playing the national championship on Monday and you weren't even invited? I mean, to, to be honest, during the whole season, our, our whole focus was to just focus on you know, each game that it was given to us. And now that the, the fact that the season's over, obviously we, we, we get a chance to kind of say what we what we actually feel. And, uh, I mean, I feel like we should be, you know, in the top four. I feel like we should be the, 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 the guys who, who should be playing for the national championship because, I mean, what else do you want from us? We, we beat the teams who, who obviously beat the, the two teams that's in the national championship. I mean, what what more do you want from us, to be honest? I think the winner of that game should have to play you guys. So do, do I. Yeah. So do I. So do I. <laughs> what do you think? 
I mean, I, I, I definitely agree to that. I mean, I, I, I think it's time for the, uh, the, the CFB committee to, to start making a little changes. I mean, you, you guys, you, you guys are, are there in, in, in that position to, to make sure that, you know, you put the best teams in, in the category to be a national championship. I mean, I think you leave one team out. I mean, you got a team who's unbeaten in, 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 in to an, an entire season. I mean, what more do you want? Who do you, you want? want? A good show. You want a, You want. You want a great entertainment for each and every game that you want to put on. But why not put a team that's undefeated who who beat one of the top dogs that should be in the top four? Well, that's the other thing that's unfair about this. It's not just that they're unbeaten and they did everything that asked about it. They are also the most exciting football team in the country. On top of everything else, their offense is crazy. And this dude, this dude specifically, we talked to you before. She came about how you lost your left hand. And I've been watching videos of you making interceptions and sacks and causing fumbles with what should be your left hand. And I'm just wondering, what's the time that you stood up and said, damn, that was pretty amazing. What I just did there is pretty amazing, given that I don't have the use of a, a left hand. I don't have a left hand. I mean, to be honest, uh, I, I didn't really, I really never thought, thought about it. I mean, for me, I just play football. I mean, during the game, it, it, it's, the intensity, everything is so heightened that you don't really think about, you know, having one hand. You don't think about, you know, what I'm going to do to make the play. You just go out there and just make it. I mean, after the season was over and after the game set in and, you know, we, we actually felt that we won because, to be honest, it, it felt unreal. You know, winning the MVP, everything, it just felt unreal. But it kind of set in like, man, what I'm doing right now is, is truly amazing. I mean, everybody outside looking in, you know, obviously, you know, they, they love they love what they're seeing and, you know, they think I'm doing a really good job, but to me, I just felt like I was just playing football. I never really thought about the things I was doing. I never thought about, you know, people I was helping out who's not playing football, the the, the, the women and children that, you know, I'm going to help motivate. And then we sit into last night, like, I just sat down with my family and, you know, talked to them about everything and talking to my brother over the phone. And I, it really hit me. Like, I, I had to share a tear or two just, just because, like, you know what, what I'm doing is right. I mean, I'm helping so many people and, you know the crazy, the crazy thing. The crazy thing is, like, I make plays that a, a, a lot of others wouldn't be able to make. You know, so it, it just it's just been a thrill for me. It's just been like a roller coaster for me. Shakim, you you really are an, an inspiration, and and you have just a, a small anecdotal thing. You have a chance to have a handicap sticker, and you don't want one. You don't consider yourself to be handicapped. Uh, why is that? Do you think? Because that's a big thing. I mean, for me, the, the handicap word was always like, if you handicap, it, 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 that, that means you're limited to things that you can do. I mean, I'm not limited to nothing. I can do whatever I want, to be honest. If if I set my mind to do something, it, it's going to be done. It's, it's always a way to do it. You know, obviously, for some guys and some women, you know, there's certain things that got to be done in certain ways, and you just got to figure out that, that, that way to, to get things done. And for me, I was always able to, to be able to learn and, grasp things real fast to be able to get things done that I needed to be done. Do you feel like the so NFL... Me, me, ha- me having a handicap sticker wasn't something that I wanted, and it's crazy because it was one time where I parked in a handicap spot and woke up in the morning and got a ticket. I probably thought I should have probably got a handicap sticker then. <laughs> it's kind of funny because once you get that ticket, you know, you buy it, man, man, I should have got a handicap <laughs> Shaquem Griffin with us. They are the national champions. UCF, he is the MVP, the defensive player. He is a bad, bad man. Shaquem, do you feel like you're going to get a fair shot to make it in the NFL? Because a lot of people would love to see you have that opportunity. I mean, the only thing I do is just, is just hope for it, you know, and, and just have my prayers, have my prayers set up to, you know, hopefully put me in the position that they get opportunity to play in the NFL. But the only thing I can do is just focus on what I can control, and that's be getting ready for the, you know, the Singer Bowls, and me getting ready for the Combine or wherever I'm gonna be at, and just train hard and just keep shocking, the, just keep shocking the world. That's the only thing I can do is just keep people wrong. I mean, if I get a foot in the door, that's 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 really all I need is just the opportunity to show everybody what I can do, and you know, I I, I be me being who I am, I never shy away from competition. I never shy away from, you know, the big stage or, or whatever it's being called. It's just when it's time for me and when my when my name is called, it's time for me to do what I can do, and I just play as hard as I can. 
So are you happy? Because this is a big deal. I don't know if you're aware, but Dan has a personal record book. And in that record book, it says 2018 a college football national champion is UCF. They are the champion. And by the way, you won the Heisman Trophy in his personal record book. So That's has right. that helped soften the blow at all? Any of this? No, well, I'm just wondering if you'll come down to our bogus national championship watch party next week as the real champion because we're doing <laughs> something here to, to watch that crappy game that we're going to have next Monday when you are the real and rightful king. I mean that 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 would be a sight to see. I mean that would be amazing to be there. They you know they had the real national championships in the house because obviously CFB is it's just it's been all over the place. I mean you, you we 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 talked about it all year. I mean you, you know they they had the decision. Obviously it's all it's always up to them. And I remember teams being in front of us who had two or three losses, and you know Coach Frost was always uh, was. Was was being on us about you know not worrying about what's being said, but you know obviously him being the head coach, he always had things that, that be said about you know us not being right with how we should be. And only thing we can do is just win games. I mean, me me just just being honest and me talking about everything. I mean, CFB, what more do you want from us? You you say win games, you did it. You say go undefeated, we did that. You say beat big teams, we did that. I mean. What else do you want? I mean, we we need to know because it's going to be years and years from now when you you're going to be doing the same thing about you know not having the biggest conference, not being that top five, you no know, conference. We win games no matter if it's SEC, ACC. We don't care about the three letters that's next to your name. All we do is care about the team that's in front of us that's staying the way of our path. Take out someone specific in the committee. How about Steve Weiberg? <laughs> take, a former take, out, take out a committee member. you got to take out somebody. The committee's bogus, Shaquem. I'm like, giving you the easiest I, I know, target, I know, we're, I, I know we're, go- we're goading you, but the committee's <laughs> bogus, man. Like, what more? You, how much better than perfect would you have liked Shaquem Griffin to be? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's so many people I can, I can choose right now, but it's – I can't choose not one person. It's the entire committee. It is. I it's mean, Weiber. I, I, it's the entire committee. It's choice. I mean, you can't Weiber. just choose one person on the decisions that they made. It's the entire committee. It is. I mean, it's, what what else do you want? You're I right. Mean, you're right. You but say it's the SEC team. You say it's the ACC team. I mean, we UCL. We don't care about the three letters that's next to your name. We just care about the people who's in front of us. It's trying to stop us from getting where we need to go. Right. I mean, you're right. It is the entire committee's fault, but there are very important people on there who, if you say something personal about him, you might get in trouble. <laughs> Weiberg's not important, so just take him out. Just take out Weiberg. <laughs> Poor Weiberg. Will you accept our <laughs> national championship trophy? Now, I have to inform you that it's kind of bogus and that it's a it's a very big trophy. It's ornate and it's beautiful, but it's been in our producer's uh, garage for a couple of years because he wanted a fantasy league, our fantasy league. But it's a big trophy. Will you accept our trophy? It's three feet. It's bigger than Nick's. Saving, uh, would you accept our trophy as national oh, champion? I, I, I'll accept it over and over again. No okay. doubt yes. about that. All right, yes. we're gonna get. Well, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get your mailing address, and we're gonna see if we pay all your expenses to get down here and watch the national championship. No, the that. consolation game. The, right. That's, I'm sorry. My bad. The bogus national championship <laughs> game. Very good. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That, 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 that'd be a sight to see. That would be awesome. Uh, all right, Shaquem, congratulations. You really are an inspiration. I'm telling you, yeah. I, I, I remember a couple of years ago when you guys were 0-12, and, 12 and you're, I, I remember thinking to myself, wait a minute, UCF is playing with a guy who's got only one hand, and no wonder they're 0-12. So to see, like that was my own stupidity, to see that guy be celebrating, wrecking the SEC team that beat the two teams that are playing for the champion – Chip, and to see him raise both his arms and see him glorious there with one arm missing is an inspiration to everyone watching who cares about sports that you can do whatever it is you're willful enough to do. So thank you, Shaquem. You really are an inspiration. Thank you, sir. And thank you so much, and thank you for having me today. Thank you. All right, man. Congratulations. You're home for the 2017 regular season national championship UCF Knights. <laughs> Catch more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern, on ESPN Radio and ESPNU. Dan Levatar. He is an idea guy, though. Greg Cody is he's an idea yeah. man, and Thank other you. people need to execute his ideas. I understand that. I'm the same way. Yeah. I just throw things out there, and hopefully someone else will execute whatever it is I throw out there. Stugats. Do Stugats and Cody say they're idea men to camouflage their laziness? 
Because I'm not claiming to be an idea guy. I'm not claiming to be a facilitator. I am claiming to be someone who wants other people to do things. This is the Don Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, this is our favorite, Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. You guys love him. We love him. 786-456-4837 is the telephone number if you want to talk to Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. This is his last appearance for a couple of weeks because he's headed out to some exotic locale where things can possibly eat him, and he might never return because (laughs) these are some of the places that he ends up in that are very dangerous. (laughs) Um, But let's get some calls here at your leisure, 786-456-4837. Mike, you're on ESPN Radio with Ron McGill. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. How susceptible are animals to diseases from raw meats like humans are? From raw meat, well, it depends what kind of animal. I mean, uh, generally speaking, most animals, especially carnivores that are natural predators, uh, have natural resistances to those types of things. Things like vultures, of course, they have different types of resistances. They can eat rancid, dying stuff and parasitic. So it depends on the animal. If it's a, you know, an animal like a domestic dog that's been raised on commercial dog food diet, and all of a sudden you give it raw meat, it could get sick. Uh, there's certain, certainly parasites that can be transmitted through raw, raw meat or undercooked meat. So uh, generally speaking, most animals that are carnivores in the wild have natural resistances to those things, just like we as people do. You know, if you go to different places in the world where somebody, uh, let's say, is drinking the water and they're not getting sick and then you drink the water and you get really sick, you wonder why they don't get sick. Well, because they were raised that way. That's, they built up antibodies as youngsters and they're able to live in that environment. So it depends on the survival, depends on the animal. Ron, anybody with a dog and a cat in the house knows that jealousy can be involved. And I'm wondering, in, in the community of a zoo, uh, what examples of jealousy have you seen among animals? Oh, we see it a lot, uh, certainly in the primates. I mean, I guess you're, you're you know, associating that closely with, with humans, but we see it with primates. Things like gorillas and chimps, they certainly have favorite people, and they see other people around those favorite people, they get upset. Uh, we see it with things, people who have uh, animals like parrots for pets. Parrots are incredibly jealous uh, and uh, possessive animals, things like macaws. I, I usually recommend against getting those animals as pets because what they do is they bond with one person, and then anybody comes near them, they get really jealous. They'll attack you because they'll, they'll fight you for the attention of that person. So depending on the type of animal you're caring for, you certainly see jealousy that way. You see it in primates or any other animal. Lions, for instance. A male lion, uh, let's say he has a coalition and he has a brother, and they both accept the pride together. Well, you know what? They're best of friends. They're loving brothers until the females come into heat, and then they'll be really jealous, and they'll fight the heck out of each other to be the one to be with that female. So generally speaking, males, females make males stupid at certain times in their lives. <laughs> Jake, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron, I have a question living up here in Connecticut. What do snakes and frogs do in the winter, especially when it's bitterly cold like it is now? Thanks. That's a great question. Uh, generally speaking, a lot of the snakes, some snakes that you don't find in the north, like the tropical snakes, you know, we have the, py- the, the problem with pythons down here in South Florida. You will never have problems with pythons up in, in New York or the New England area up north because the first freeze will kill them. But certain snakes, like garter snakes and ribbon snakes, they're actually found up as high up as Manitoba, Canada. And what happens is when the winter cha- uh, season starts to come in, they go underground and they literally kind of hibernate. hibernate. They get into these huge balls of massive snakes and they shut down. They're able to shut their bodies down through the winter season. And then as soon as it starts to heat up, the, the photo period changes, the sun comes out, they'll actually start to wake up slowly. Same thing with amphibians. They can shut themselves down. Being cold-blooded animals, they literally turn their, their bodies off. They can make their heartbeat go to you know one beat an hour and survive. And that's what they do in the cold weather. But there's only certain species that have adapted to that. A lot of the tropical species will never be found that far north simply because they can't adapt to that cold. Sean, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, my question is actually for Dan. I was wondering what you and John Skipper talked about over beers, and wasn't he resi- <laughs> Let's go to the next caller, 786-456-4837. Uh, what is the next caller, Mike? Santo. Santo, you're on ESPN Radio. Go ahead. Ron, I just graduated college. I have a ton of student loan debt. Nonetheless, I'm looking to take an incredible, uh, breathtaking trip to an exotic locale somewhere in the world to see the most amazing animals. Wanted to get your recommendation, what time of the year and where I should go. 
Southern Africa, anytime from June through September, is just unbelievable. You can go to East Africa, too. I'm not crazy about East Africa as much anymore because it's become a bit too commercialized. But if you go down, especially to Botswana, it will change your life. It is the most life-changing trip I've ever taken, and I've been around the world. As a matter of fact, like Dan says, I leave in a week. I'm going down to Antarctica uh, for, for a couple of weeks. But uh, there's nothing like Southern Africa, especially Botswana. Dylan, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hi, Ron. Happy New Year. Um, I was watching Planet Earth 2 for the first time yesterday, and um, they featured a bird of paradise that had a really incredible way of uh, attracting a mate. Um, so I was wondering what's the best mating ritual either that you've seen or that you know of. Thanks. Well, I, I think it go, probably goes to another bird. Uh, it's called a bower bird. And this bird actually goes and finds things like jewelry, but it's not really jewelry, but to, to the female it's jewelry. Like he'll find like blue bottle caps or pieces of tin foil, and he brings them and he puts them in the bower. He makes like a treasure chest, and that's what he uses to attract the female. It's like he's like, look what I have, all these diamonds for you here, and he literally collects whatever brightly colored neat thing that's not usually found in the environment to attract the female. So the bower bird, to me, has one of the best courtship rituals as far as attracting females. Ron, one of the most amazing sights in nature to me is when you see a flock of birds all flying in unison, taking a, a sharp left turn at exactly the same time. What's the phenomenon that uh, enables a flock of birds to, to do that? You know, I wish I knew the exact answer to that, Greg, but bottom line is they are basically feeding off of each other's movement and their instincts are so quick because of the need for survival to evade predators or whatever that as they go in a flock it's just like watching a school of fish it's the same thing if you watch a school of fish in the water they all switch at the exact same time it's like this wave there's a bird called a quellia it's the most numerous bird in the world and you watch these flocks of quellia they make incredible clouds in the sky and it's just they follow each other's wing uh, movement so it's so split second that it looks like it's happening simultaneously. It's the incredible, you know, quick uh, muscle movements of these animals that enable them to look that, like that. Kobe, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Greetings, Ron. I thank you for your time. Are humans you. the only species that wears clothing? And if so, is that due to our pretentious nature or is there a reason for it? Thank you. Well, um, you know, it's a good question. Now, I've seen. I've seen primates, you know, take big leaves and wrap themselves up in the rain. They use them as raincoats and things like that. But as far as making something permanent that they wear in the same way that humans wear, I cannot really think of anything. There are some fish that create bubble nets around themselves, uh, some amphibians that do the same thing. But it's not really using clothing to protect against the environment or anything. So I really can't think of anything. I don't think it's really our pretentious attitude. It's our adaptability. It's our intelligence that enables us to live in some place like Chicago in the winter, uh, whereas normally we wouldn't be able to do so. So our intelligence enables us to adapt and build basically what is a tool for the environment, which is clothing. So the way that we end this segment every week is we go to a video, and Ron McGill does play-by-play. -play. Okay. If you're watching on television, it's usually a tremendous video. If you're not and you're just listening on the radio, this is still a fun experience. So uh, okay, before ready. you leave for go. a couple of weeks to go to Antarctica, let's watch a video with Ron McGill. He will give you the play-by-play. -play. Okay, turning it on. Oh, my. Um, well, geez, it looks like we got two pandas kind of trying to make other pandas here at the base of a tree. This is like almost animal porn here. Oh, jeez! A panda just falls out of the tree and breaks it up. It's like your parents walking in on you when you're in the middle of something that they shouldn't be seeing. Oh, Holy crap, that was hilarious. Oh, Did you see that? Yes. Oh, but look, now it's like, oh, now it's like a threesome. Now it's a foursome. Oh, there's four. That was wonderful. But, Jesus, what a interrupt us that was. Wow, <laughs> Happy right, so freaking sex, New Year. Panda sex. Happy New Year. Enjoy Antarctica. Good to see you, Ron. <laughs> Panda sex, night. panda sex so vigorous that a panda fell out of a tree from the vibrations of the sensuality. Don Lebertard. Which are we making less of today? Nellie's or Bert's? Stugats. Although Nellie Furtado. 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 She's with a Y. My Nellie, my Nana, was N-E-L-L-I-E, -L -L -E, which is the way to go if you're a Nellie. See, IEs look down on Ys. Throughout the name kingdom. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So, does it dilute it at all for you that uh, Stugat says he's fantastic after great. just mis like botching his name and, and seeming like he was reading the name, seeing it for the first time? Uh, I was. Is it Sony or Sonny? <laughs> I think it's Sony. Sony, I, I, I'm confident on Sony. No, I am why not would confident. Be, why would you be confident about anything here? I mean, Sony. I mean, S-O-N-Y. That's how you spell Sony. Who doesn't spell Sony that way? 
All right, so. You don't think so? I don't know. You think it's sunny. Really? You're going to mock me after getting making Michelle Michael? That seems I, weird that I would do that. All right, so let's go ahead and do Stugatz's weekend <laughs> observations. It, it is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. It is good, though. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Dan John Gruden is back. And you know what that means? That means the Raiders are for real. James Harrison, four sacks, AFC championship game, collision course. James Harrison, Super Bowl MVP, collision course. James Harrison, going into the Hall of Fame. As a New England Patriot, <laughs> collision course. James Harrison, finding an easier path to the Super Bowl. James, the KD, is strong in you. James, just know that this Super Bowl won't count in my personal oh, record book. Oh, wow. Speaking of personal record books, congratulations to UCF for winning the 2017 College Football National Championship in Dan's personal record book. By the way, anyone else notice Dan trying to steal the whole personal record book thing from me? That's right. Here's why mine is better. Whoever wins Monday night won't have a national championship in my personal record book unless they play and beat UCF. After beating Auburn in the Peach Bowl, Scott Frost said, it's about the players. It's always about the players. <laughs> so what is Scott doing to those players? Yeah. Leaving them. Scott, you went undefeated with those players. They worked really hard for you. And now you're leaving them for a better job and more money. I'm pretty certain it's all about you. Jeff Fisher, trying to take credit for the Rams' success. Jeff, the Stugats is strong in you. <laughs> Josh Rosen. Said he prefers New York over Cleveland. Josh, you know what I prefer? That you don't tell me what you prefer. Wow. There is no, uh, who cares where Josh Rosen wants it? Hey, well, you're not good at UCLA. Who cares? You go to Cleveland, you play there. You go to New York, you play there. I'm tired of all these diva quarterbacks coming out of college. He's going to be a very good pro. Uh, who said, uh, really? Based on what? Um, he had an awful season. Overrated. And so is Darnold, by the way. That guy is a disaster. And this Rosen guy. I mean, seriously. And Allen. All three. You know what? All three guys, Dan. All right. You're done with all of them. I'm done with all of them. And I don't want to hear where they want to play and don't want to play. They haven't earned the rights. Okay. I don't care. There's nothing worse than parking really far from your destination. And while walking really far to your destination, realizing... There were 12 spots available that were a lot closer to your destination. Yeah, that one hurts. College football, welcome back. College basketball, can't wait for you to start. Andrew Luck said his shoulder is stronger. I'd hope so. It feels like he's been rehabbing the thing for five years. Dirk Cutter survives. Ben McAdoo does it. I really believe Ben McAdoo got fired for getting a bad haircut. I'm telling you, the Saints are the team to beat. And if they are not, then watch out for the Panthers. Wait, does Rob Manfred have to apologize for saying something that wasn't true to a national audience on our show? Because I don't want to live in a world where we have to apologize for not being forthright. Otherwise, I'd spend all day right. apologizing. Can you imagine the, uh, the feelings and things that will spill out of Russell Westbrook's mouth if the Thunder beat the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. And yes, I left the Rockets out of the Western Conference Finals. Why? Chris Paul. Nothing. And I mean nothing. Will make you feel older than going to a Billy Joel concert on New Year's Eve. Wait. There is. Going to see a Billy Joel concert on New Year's Eve, looking up at the Jumbotron and seeing an old white drunk man dancing with his drink spilling yeah. over onto his hand. Yeah. And that man being yeah. Greg Cody. I believe it. <laughs> you know you're on that Jumbotron, right? <laughs> and you know the drink spilled all over your hand, right? I have no idea. <laughs> of course it did. Adam Gase has cocaine eyes. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> what happened? Uh, uh, it's an observation. Uh, <laughs> Oh, okay, that makes it okay. That's what these are called. Okay. It's an observation. I see things, I observe, right, and then right, I write them. Right, it's an observation. All right, wow. Dan clearly is Billy hiding under the desk. <laughs> I think so. yeah, okay. Clearly, the move to Nathan Peterman catapulted the Bills into the postseason. Don't be surprised if the Falcons win it all, and be very surprised if the Titans do. Just for one second. I'd like to see what the world would be like if Baker Mayfield was black. You know what the S <laughs> in Shaquin Griffin stands for? Sundays. Yes. Rockets. Yeah. Yes. Warriors. Western Conference Finals. Collision Course. And that, Dan, is called Covering All Your Bases. It really is. Thank you. <laughs> I am great at it. Dick Enberg, number three on my all-time list of big game voices. Rest in peace. I pride myself in seeing things before they happen. Jim Harbaugh, Colts, collision course. Is Kawhi Leonard no longer good? Does Nick Saban have hair plugs? Because my Google image search were inconclusive. He definitely needs a colorist, though. Or he definitely sees a colorist, though. That's not up for debate. Steph Curry, it's difficult. <laughs> let's, let's do Nick Saban over again. Does that, Nick the, Saban the reading, have hair plugs? The, the reading was very poor on that. It seemed like you might be reading it for the first time. Um, that's because I was. Does Nick Saban have hair plugs? Because my Google image searches were inconclusive. He definitely sees a colorist, though. That's not up for debate. Okay. Steph Curry, it's difficult not to like you. Kevin Durant, you don't need to worry about that department. Matt Trip, uh, wow. Matt Patricia's pencil. Detroit collision course. Well, got my first look of both Georgia and Oklahoma yesterday. And man, those two teams are good. Oklahoma, Georgia, one for the ages. Oklahoma, Georgia, track meet. Except for the NCAA schools and coaches exploiting teenage boys to make millions. Oklahoma, Georgia was everything that is great about sports. <laughs> Can you imagine the amount of sex being had at the University of Georgia by just Jake Fromm? Oklahoma, different coach, same results. I would watch Larry Fedora eat snacks and talk football all day. It took half a decade, but LeBron was right about Shabazz Napier. Mark Davis trying to shift attention away from his awful hair by somehow bringing on a co-owner who has worse hair than him. No! And John Gruden. No! No! Their observations. No! Their observations. I mean, I look at John Gruden, I Come see the hair, I don't think it's very good. Mark, Mark Davis, Davis has scarecrow hair! <laughs> Radioactive scarecrow hair! <laughs> Apparently, all you have to do to become an NFL owner is go 57 and 55 in your final seven seasons as head coach and win a Super Bowl with Tony Dungy's players. <laughs> By the way, if anyone at this network is interested, I'm available every Monday night from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. for the remainder of time. All right. Try to read the tea leaves on this one, Dan. Sean McDonough takes over the Monday night booth, and all of a sudden, John Gruden wants to coach again. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs, an expiring contract, months removed from Gruden's monster talent contract, coming off the books? This guy. <laughs> Heard our priles. Had a hell of a New Year's. Dan! Wait, wait, what? What happened? He had a hell of a New Year's. I'm just saying, Gruden, that's off the books, and my contract's coming up. This guy. Dan, those are the weekend observations. Don Lebatard. You want me to get real? Stugats. I'll get real. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We will get to Greg Cody's back in my day in a second. Guillermo, put it on the poll, please. Given how long he's been rehabbing, are you expecting Andrew Luck to return <laughs> with the throwing arm of an Olympic bodybuilder? The throwing right arm. 
a, an Olympic bodybuilder. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's going to come back, right? He's, this has been an unusually long rehab. He did the Europe thing. Yeah, all the yeah. Euro, all the Europe thing. Yeah, yeah, the Europe thing. <laughs> Go get things in Europe, slather them on your body, and then come back with an Olympic wrestling arm. I always wondered why people, journalists, because I am not one of them, uh, how come they don't take that story more seriously. Like, yeah. someone might want to look into why Kobe Bryant, Peyton Manning, Andrew, they all go to Europe and they come back and they're healthy. Anywho, Chris Sims with us. He is ranking the quarterbacks for us. Top 71 in the league right now. 71 is Cody Kessler. 70 is Blake Bortles. This all started with Blake Bortles. Uh, and so Chris Sims is joining us now. We're getting to number 55. Uh, so 59 is Paxton Lynch. 58 is Matt Castle. 57 is Ryan Mallett. Uh, 56 is Deshaun Kaiser. What a group of losers those Browns are. It's Deshaun. That's a fun. <laughs> and the number five, I do all fine there. Number five, number 55 for Chris Sims, uh, best quarterback in the NFL is? Brock Osweiler, Denver Broncos. Oh, come on. Come on. What are you doing? <laughs> this is all fun and games until Brock Osweiler is right ahead of Deshaun Kaiser. <laughs> that's, where, that's where he blasphemes all right chris thank you sir we're looking forward to the new year uh new year feels a lot like the last year we uh have only 54 more days of this so thank you for your contribution <laughs> did you enjoy show. your break I, I can't wait yeah i had a long weekend that's all i got but thank you yes thank you to god for being caring about me i okay. appreciate that you got it buddy all right uh, all right be good guys yeah. totally insincere. uh time now for greg cody's back in my day and now, it is time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guy, Greg Cody, with Back in My Day. Apple wristwatches. You know, just because the technology exists, just because we can, it doesn't always mean we should. The thought occurred the other night as we're out to dinner with two other couples, and one of our party is wearing an Apple wristwatch. The thing keeps softly buzzing with alerts, texts, incoming calls, news bulletins, a constant electronic murmuring throughout the meal. (laughs) And this annoying gadget's wearer, she repeatedly is distracted, staring at or talking into her wrist like a mad woman as the rest of us stare incredulously. The Apple wristwatch crowd is oblivious to the inherent rudeness. It's fun to watch them watch their watch. They walk around transfixed, repeatedly staring at their watch as if they're running late or have someplace else to be. (laughs) It's like watching a zombie adolescent out with the family in a restaurant but eschewing any pretense of friendly palaver by wearing earbuds and staring entranced at his smartphone playing video games. (laughs) You know, we used to make fun of futuristic gadgets like the Apple wristwatch. Remember Maxwell's smart shoe phone? Or how Mr. Spacely talked George Jetson on a... Visa phone in 1962, years before the video phone became debuting at the World's Fair. Now everything we laughed about is becoming reality and to our great detriment. Folks, take off that Apple wristwatch and never wear it again, please. And certainly not in public. You want something on your wrist? Strap on Dad's Timex. The one with 12 numbers and two hands and that silver stretch band that pinched... I'm Greg Cody, yeah. and that's how it was yeah. back in my day. Yes. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern, on ESPN Radio, and you can watch on ESPNU.